As the last tweet mentioned, OpenTelemetry is really good for finding issues after the fact. If you actually want to understand the control flow of your application, the best way to understand it is to actually look at the code. Unless, of course, your code is crap. You can also put it this way, if you have a console application, you do not hook up OpenTelemetry to understand the control flow in that console application. Whatever readable control flow you have in that simple console application, you actually want to preserve it for the distributed system. Welcome to the Raw Coding YouTube channel, my name is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about understanding control flow in a distributed message processing system. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description. I have a C Sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C Sharp as I do it, I highly recommend you check it out. Let's go ahead and get started. Here are the two applications. One is flying blind. The other one is called Blueprint. Blueprint is where the control flow will be understandable. Flying blind is where it's hopefully you can get by the name. It's not going to be understandable. Both of the projects are using Wolverine as the message processing framework. And we're going to start with flying blind. We're going to go into program CS. We're going to start at the top. The setup is pretty minimal. We also have a submit where we can submit a message with some kind of number. We also clear a channel and this channel is meant to kind of simulate open telemetry or a custom stack where you can essentially aggregate trace messages of what has happened and then dump them somewhere right in the log file whatever. Next, we have a couple of messages and then these messages are going to be processed. So emit handler right here, we are processing submit number, we are dumping a message that looks something like this to the channel. And then randomly, we are figuring out which one of these messages we want to submit next. And the point here is that we have a bunch of handlers, we're going to submit a message, the message is going to go through a bunch of commands like add, subtract, multiply, divide. And by the end of it, we're going to have some kind of result. If we go to the add handler, we process the add message. And this if statement right here is basically the Achilles heel for these sorts of systems. A handler somewhere in the middle is going to emit some kind of message and nobody knows about it. Okay, nothing on the outside can take a look at this handler and say what message it is going to emit. You can see what message it's going to consume. And only if you have some kind of Roslyn analyzer, it can maybe spit out what kind of message you're going to emit. But imagine if you would have swagger for this handler over here or for your whole message system, you can actually see which handlers are consuming which messages and which messages they're emitting. You don't have that information. All you're seeing is this scope over here, you're accepting some kind of message, and then you're going to send it somewhere far away. Then you basically have to figure out the logic here, hold it in your head, go to the next message. And here it's at so it's a little bit recursive. It's a we can say easy ish. For the sub handler and the mole handler and the div handler, there are different conditions over here and over here as well. And they emit different kind of messages here. I only have five messages. These messages can grow into hundreds, thousands, you get the picture. So the amount of handlers that can execute based on an incoming message and based on the logic can be pretty significant. And because code is two dimensional spread across multiple folders, you can't really have a bird's eye view where you can draw a line. Ah, oh, yeah, it goes through this add handler, it goes to the multiply, it comes back to the sub handler, it goes to the divide, it come back, comes back over here. And then this is the exit. Okay, at no time you can actually zoom out and see something like this, unless you take open telemetry embedded into your handlers and only understand about your workflow after the message has been submitted into your system. You can think about this as the workflow trace, I'm going to refer to this as blueprint. The reason I'm referring to this as blueprint is because I tried Unreal Engine at one point, and I've seen how you can have an event being raised, and then you make a blueprint for how this event is going to be processed. Okay, so this hypothetical thing that you want, you don't have it. So the only real way that you can understand the control flow or try to replicate it in your mind is either have open telemetry or also carry the state in your head, think about what message the state was in, which logic got triggered and which messages got emitted. Hopefully you can understand that that is insanely hard. Let's go ahead and take a look at this right at the top over here. I have submit and result. The application is running on port 7000. I'm going to come back over here. We are going to submit number one, two, three. And then I'm going to duplicate this tab over here so we can take a look at the result. And here is essentially the trace. 
if I submit a number like one, let's take a look at the result. And this is what this trace looks like. And let me make this a little bit bigger. Hopefully you get the picture here. When we're submitting a number like one or two, if I flip over to the results now and I refresh it, you don't know what is going to happen. And if you try to recall to the code that I was showing earlier, it's going to take you some time to figure out what actually happened. Now, let's say if we have another solution where we want to submit to and we want these two operations to happen. So multiply by four and 10. We have a UI that looks something like this. We're going to submit to, we're going to multiply by four and then we want to multiply or sorry, add 10 and I'm not sure. Let me, let me put a space here. I'll make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to compute this and the result is going to be 18. What you see here in front of you is a very, very simple example. The UI for this takes me like five minutes to stand up. Hopefully you can see how inside this text box is data. And as long as it is data, we can do the following. We can say incoming message. If some kind of condition, let me put an F here. We want to do this thing over here or maybe this thing over here, not even a maybe, do these in parallel, and then this goes off and does something else. All of this can be translated into a blob of JSON, which is kind of what this can be as well. You should be able to take this flow and put it inside its own box, okay? And if you're capable of taking that data and encapsulating it in that orange box and make this system collapsible on itself or essentially recursive, you can say this, place the orange box over here and call into this orange box. And again, you can place that into its own box over here and you can have things like uh, this, right? So this calls on in, into the orange box and then calls into the yellow box and the orange box is uh, built up out of these things. Okay, so really what I'm putting in front of you here is Unreal Engine Blueprint System, okay? Also can be known as workflows. I found out about blueprints before I touched workflows, so that's what I'm using. Anyway, how does this blueprint thing works? Is it in process? Is it distributed? It is distributed. We're still using Wolverine and we still have messages. And I know I scrolled past it really quickly. We will take a look at it a little bit more closer now. So we still submit the input. Uh, the input is a number and the operation description. If you watch my data driven architecture video, this is pretty much it. We take the script that was submitted to us again, because it's data, this can be stored in the database. This can be assigned per user. This can be assigned per customer. You can duplicate a row and customize it any way that you want. And by the way, please, please important note, you don't want to have UI like this. Hopefully this doesn't go unnoticed. UI is super important. You're writing code in C sharp. If there wasn't IntelliSense, if there wasn't code navigation, you wouldn't know what the heck your code was doing, okay? You would not be able to write it. So you need good UI in order to model your system. If you do not have good UI, this doesn't work. Anyway, we get our number, we parse our script and we submit it as the steps. If we take a look at the messages, we have submit number, add sub, mold, divide, and then submit result. Most of these will inherit from message, which just holds the accumulator. And this is going to be another important step that I'm going to talk about because really you kind of don't want this here. The execution steps can be carried along. You can have a program counter, you can have a GUID for which blueprint is being executed, etc. If we take a look at what the handlers for these look like, well, we have whatever work we want to do. And then we just say, yeah, we acknowledged this message, right? So now your handlers are isolated to just display the work. And because Wolverine is really built in this functional style where handlers are meant to be just static functions, you can't have two objects that handle a message. If you want to configure how this handler will behave, that will have to go along with the message. So anyway, some kind of work gets performed and then we say, cool, that work is done. If we come down to the acknowledge, this is where most of the continuation work happens. We say, are there any next steps to do? If not, submit the result. And for the submit result, we just write it to the channel. And at this point, this is what gets printed over here. Okay. This is quite important for the next message that we're popping off here. This operation will basically say, what's the next handler? And here I'm doing manual mapping. 
you can create some kind of interpreter, some kind of custom parser, which is going to give you more control of what the next operation is going to be. If there are going to be multiple operations, please understand that you can have some kind of convention with which you can customize this. And then the total over here. So I'm passing the total. And because of this, uh, the solution that I've built up is really focused on processing messages that contain numbers. If you're going to be coding up handlers, which can emit one message and then another message and then there is a third message just like Unreal Engine when you have a step for that blueprint you're going to have three outputs maybe for one you ignore it and you say nothing happens over here this goes to this rule this goes to this rule but in order to have this you need information on your handler which messages it is capable of outputting if you know reflection you put attributes on your handlers on your classes basically make sure you have some kind of descriptors on your handlers which say what is going to happen so again, the way that I'm working with numbers over here is very hard coded. You want to adapt it to whatever style you're doing over here. And again, the way that I'm traversing my script, I'm just saying grab the rest of the commands, pop them on and try to execute the operation again. Some comments that I'm putting at the top over here, you want your control flow language interaction map context definition. Please understand you have this blob, this goal that you want to happen when a message comes into your system. You're going to have A, B, C, D, E, F, G happen, and they're going to happen in whatever order they need to happen. And they're going to be happening for a specific blueprint. So this is blueprint number one. This is what's going to happen. And you can execute it for multiple messages. If you need blueprint number two, it is serving a different goal. This can contain the same handler. However, it may contain different handlers and it may communicate in a different way. I accidentally removed everything, but essentially what you're trying to create a language for is this behavior that is happening between points. Like the handlers themselves don't matter that much. What's important is the interaction between those handlers, because these things will work together towards a goal. And this interaction is really what's going to tell you what is happening in your system. So yeah, when you're at a point where you have a user interface that basically describes the workflow for what messages are coming in, you don't actually need open telemetry to tell you what happens because it's right in front of you. You can see what is happening. Hopefully I don't need to state it again. You have the plane and you have these uh, handlers interacting with each other, right? You're not inside the handler trying to figure out where is this going to send the thing. You're over here overviewing the thing, okay? And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section or better yet, come join my Discord server. If you would like the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on my Patreon. I will really appreciate your support and a big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.